Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. This is episode 7 of Winter is Coming Wednesday. I have been on an every other week schedule. However, I just had an episode last week and I am working on two shoebox swaps and I have decided to do one winter card and one Thanksgiving card. So I'm going to share them with you and go over a little bit of the how I decided what I was going to do and what my logic was behind that. And then after this is done, if you guys could leave a comment and let me know if you would be interested in an episode, not of Winter is Coming Wednesday, just a video on tips for preparing for shoebox swaps. And I plan if you guys are interested to do one geared toward like a non-demonstrator and then what I do when I go to shoebox swaps that are only demonstrators in attendance. So let me know. Uh, so the first one is the winter one. It uses snow crystal, which is a giant snowflake. And I knew I wanted to use this one again, since I attend shoebox swaps that are for demonstrators. It's the North Carolina Demos Group, in fact. And I started out with the stencil that is with the masks for the holiday catalog. There's one that's a snowflake, and then there's some fall leaves. And I was initially thinking of doing both of the masks. Masks is what Stampin' Up! calls a stencil, but they're just stencils. So I had the sparkling snowflakes for the sentiment, as well as added smaller snowflakes to complement the giant snowflake. I need to make 11 of these, so I had to come up with trim and embellishing bling that would be enough to make 11 cards identical to each other. However, when I do it, I leave options. So here was my mock-up, and this isn't uh, actually put into a card because I'm going to trim it down and make it into a card later. So it is on basic white. This is clear heat embossed. So when you initially do the embossing, you don't see the snowflake until you take your fancy blending tool and you start adding the color, which this is blueberry bushel and around the perimeter, I'm trying to think, Coastal Cabana, I believe. And I ended up remembering that I bought the Snowflake Magic Specialty DSP. So I had to adjust my colors. It wasn't until I was playing with the stenciling and did the stamping and I liked the effect. I even have water droplets. Let's see if I can show them to you here. So I did some water treatment and when I have my sample, so when you do a shoebox swap, you actually see a completed card. And I will list the treatments that I put on it. And that way, these demonstrators can explore all three of the treatments, well, four if you include the sponging. So they can do all four things, or they can just pick and choose what they want to do. You only get a certain amount of time, you know, everybody's there, there's 10 boxes that get rotated between 10 people. So there's actually, well, there's nine because I won't do my own card. So you're doing nine different cards in a set period of time. So if somebody really wants to make this exactly like I have it and they have lots of time, I would say that it would be hard to finish this card in the five to seven minutes time slot that we're given, which is why I always add extra and then they can decide on their own whether they want to put a little bit more time to this or less. So these are Coastal Cabana 
I might have switched to Mint Macaron here or Lost Lagoon because it doesn't look like Coastal Cabana to me. It looks a little bit more muted. So I bet I had switched at that point to Lost Lagoon. So we have Night of Navy for those snowflakes. We've got the water treatment. We've um, done the sponging. And what I do after I do the stamping. So up here, you can see that I actually stamped the navy on top of the snowflake because I will already have done the heat embossing step for them because there's no way they could do all of these, these steps in the short amount of time. And here's another one that I stamped. So I went ahead and stamped. This was stamped once, stamped off, stamped off, stamped once. Well, that's probably stamped once and that's stamped off. So that's pretty much how I did it. I did it very quickly. And then I take a paper towel. So this is a fun treatment if you're interested in exploring it. And you just wipe off the heat embossed and it will wipe off all of the ink. You get a little bit of smudging. I would wait until the ink is dry. So go on to some other step give this a couple minutes to dry and then rub this off and all of the color on the heat embossing it's a resist process and it just comes right off so that was fun so that was my mock-up i'm going to do something with it it will be turned into a card i then took when i realized that i had the snowflake magic dsp i actually had two choices i will go grab them I knew I wanted a thin strip. I actually technically have three choices, but one was not gonna work for me. So these were the three choices. This is the Lost Lagoon, and this is what got me to go with the softer color palette. Still using the Night of Navy. I didn't wanna use this white, uh, though I was intrigued by this white and silver to uh, sponge color and have this not be white. So it was potential for the fall card, but more on that later. And then there's this really bright, uh, more coastal cabana-y, but I really liked the snow crystal goes really well with this Lost Lagoon. So that is what I picked. I decided to go with a pretty simple design. There are a couple of pins that I looked at to give me the idea of making this card, though I quickly took and went off in a little bit more fancy direction than the pins, but I will put them up. So this is the roughed in card. I have chosen to put uh, rhinestones. And so I'll have a packet of rhinestones in the box because it's a shoe box swap. So you have some sort of box that everything is in. And then I have the puck full of loose Term, I will grab it. Loose silver sequins. So, <coughs> <coughs> pardon me. I had to work with what I had in my inventory. I've already uh, spent my budget for the quarter, so I pulled my Knight of Navy trim and went ahead and tucked it around this smaller segment. And then just now, I went ahead and knew I was going to use, I already had mentioned that I was going to do the Sparkling Snowflakes sentiment. So I chose Winter Greetings and this is the uh, Cheerful Daisy, has a nice label that fits perfectly and I will pop it up. I even had toyed with the Season of Chic Snowflakes, which I have here. So depending on time, I'm thinking of including two of these Season of Chic Snowflake dies to be able to add just more interest and have them. Now, I already put the sequins on here, 
so they're kind of in the way. Actually, I could just reverse my, my positioning. So I was thinking that I could go ahead and do that to just make sure that this is a nice, fancy, finished winter card. So this one is completely done. Uh, initially, if I hadn't remembered that I had this specialty DSP, I was just going to take, at the time, Coastal Cabana, not Lost Lagoon. I was going to do Coastal Cabana and go ahead and do a dry emboss treatment with the snow falling snowflake new 3D embossing folder. But the minute I remembered I had this paper that I had uh, not even opened, I knew that I would switch gears. So I had to adjust, but I think it's okay. Let me know what you think. I think it'll be a fun card for a demonstrator to make. They will have lots of extra things they can use on it. They can choose. I went ahead and did uh, quite a few crystals. That's one thing I personally really enjoy most about a card is adding lots of um, bling at the end. So I wanted to be sure to give that to them. I am not so much a trim gal, though I and I'm not even a good bow maker. So having this as just a strip, uh, I think offsets the elaborateness of the snowflakes. So I think it's a good going to be a good card. So now all I have to do. I've put everything in the box, all of the parts and pieces. I just have to get them all trimmed, and I still have to do the heat emboss on the basic white. So that is the winter card. I am not as far along on the Thanksgiving card or grateful card, so I will show you the mock-up I have of it. It uses the two embossing folders, Leaf Fall, which you can see I have, I went with a diagonal across. Uh, the next thing for me, I've done a very thin mat and I am considering putting the card on a Lost Lagoon base or a Pecan Pie base. So if you guys want to pop in your opinion on which way I should go. I have a little bit of time before I need to cut all the materials. Here is the pecan pie using the, um, get the right name, Timber 3D embossing folder. So that is going to go right here, offset. I have, so I have a heat embossed sentiment and some really cute leaves in three different colors. Again, I got an inspiration pin, but I then took it in a bit of my own direction and I will put the pin for this on my blog article. So it's gorgeously made. Yes, the gorgeously made bundle and autumn leaves die cuts. So I went ahead for, this is um, the, the wheat, wild wheat, I think it is, and copper clay. I have the gold embossed wording that you can't really even tell what it's, what it says, just to add some extra dimension to these cute leaves. And then a garden green leaf that I will have a sponge tool for them to consider sponging this one. I didn't want all of them to have the same matchy matchy text. So then I took Pretty Peacock and cut the two large die cuts from Gorgeously Made. I really love this particular open leaf die cut a lot. So I'm thinking on the Timber 3D, I might do some light sponging. On the 3D, I will do some sponging, and then I'm thinking of doing some dots as well, some random dots. So I have this extra piece, a sprig, because this is a really large. Here is the full size of the die. And I 
cut it into two pieces. And then I've already taken, I have this gold 1 8 inch and my embellishments are going to be the festive two different the only way I could get enough to make 11 was to take festive gold pearls and then rustic dots so those are they're a darker metallic so I will be doing the with gratitude this is with gratitude is from the uh, the label is from gorgeously made Ah, with gratitude is earthen textures, I believe. I will have all of the materials on my blog. So I will be taking the leaves. And I think that this card could also be just the way it is. You don't have to add all the extra bits. I just want the extra bits if they choose to spend the time. And for me, I don't think that a demonstrator stamping a sentiment on a label is the most interesting part of the card. I think it's the, for me, it's the techniques to dress the card up. So I might even go ahead and rough up some edges. I'm not quite clear. Let me, tell me what you think. Should I rough up the edges on the three leaves and the timber? Should I color the timber with some sort of a dark, either a layer of like monochromatic to try to b bring out the ridges? Because for me sitting here, it's actually starting to get dark. It's kind of gloomy today. We're a little bit stormy, which is a nice break from all the hot weather that we've had this year in Florida. Uh, so roughing up the edges, I think with gratitude, I won't rough up that and then the background, which is very vanilla. I will probably add some sponging on those leaves. Also look through my stamp sets that I own and see if there's a splatter stamp that might make it less messy. I just decided I better stop here before it gets dark and share with you guys where I'm at. This is kind of a, a, a work in progress episode. And let me know your thoughts on the fun treatments I can do to this card. And I think that's about it. Oh, and also let me know what you think about a shoebox swap exclusive. That's all I talk about is shoebox swaps. And since I'm making them now, I can share uh, what I put in the box to for these different techniques. As I, and then mine is all geared toward a demo and I will talk about what I would do for a, a potential customer uh, who maybe isn't as experienced. Give them some simpler tasks to do for that card. So that is all I've got. That concludes episode seven. Do all the YouTube things, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.